Welcome to the technical assistance call for the diversity in teaching grant. Um, today, I am your grant administrator for the 2021-2023 um, cycle. My name is Dr. Brittany Mosby, and um, you'll see my contact information at the end of this presentation as well. Um, and this presentation is being recorded, uh, and after today, we will place it on the THEC website for any colleagues um, who are not able to attend this afternoon. And um, participants, we invite you to use the Q&A um, over on the right-hand side of your screen with any questions during or throughout the presentation. Um, my colleague and current grant administrator, Dr. Corey Giesling, will be here to answer your questions. Um, and you don't need to worry about turning on your video or unmuting yourself. Um, we'll do all the driving for this call. All right. Um, so, a brief overview of the grant. This is mostly covered in the RFP, <clears throat> which you should have a copy of, but we're happy um, to provide, provide copies to anyone who needs one. Um, this is also on the THEC website. And at the conclusion of this meeting, uh, you'll be taken directly to the THEC website uh, that has the diversity and in teaching information. But to overview, uh, the diversity in teaching grant has two major objectives uh, to support programs that utilize diversity as an instructional tool and to increase K-12 teachers in Tennessee from diverse and underrepresented groups. Um, so these are funds that are appropriated by the state legislature each year um, to support these types of projects at higher education institutions. Um, with these programs, we are looking for efficient degree completion and licensure. So um, through your program, your uh, student participants uh, should be able to complete or uh, become close to completing and should be uh, ready to be licensed at the end of it. Um, we're also looking for strong partnerships with local education and agencies. Um, in your proposal, we're going to uh, recommend um, an MOU with the LEAs that you want to work with, um, but we're really interested in strengthening the connection um, between higher ed and the uh, K-12 system. Um, and then uh, finally, overview, uh, this grant is for a maximum of $100,000 over two years. Um, so that's 50,000 each year. Um, and I like to point out that this is the maximum liability. Um, THEC does reserve the right to um, decrease the maximum amount to fund more projects. So um, uh, in your budgets, make sure that you detail um, all components, all parts of your um, project so that we can see, um, um, see what the major moving parts are. Um, Timeline uh, for the grant process. Um, so we are now um, past um, the notice of intent. So our next deadline um, will be April 9th when all proposals are due. You'll submit those proposals um, as PDF files. Uh, the directions for submission are in your RFP um, and those should be submitted by close of business on that day. By April the 12th, um, we will um, disseminate those proposals to the review committee um, and they will spend the next week and a half or so reviewing all proposals. And then we will gather virtually um, to review and make final decisions on the proposals on April 22nd. Okay. By April 26th, um, we um, anticipate having approval of all our grant recommendations and to be able to notify um, the awardees uh, of their uh, of their uh, grant. Okay. Um, if you have been selected um, as an awardee, there will be a mandatory project director call on May 4th. Um, we will start the contracting process, and this is just to put on your radar, um, because these contracts will start on July 1. There will be a 
very quick, tight turnaround for getting contracts signed and back to um, THEC. And those will need to be signed both by the project director and the institution president um, before being returned. Okay. Um, and of course, the grant period will begin on July 1st of 2021 and will go until June 30th of 2023. In the um, program proposal that you'll submit, there are five major components that we are looking for, and these five components correspond to the five rubric areas um, for evaluation and scoring. Um, so we'll go through each one, but the um, the rubric sheet is also included in the RFP so that you can see how much points, how many points each um, category is worth. Um, starting with the program design, we are looking for um, a um, detailed description of your proposed program. Um, here, you'll include the curriculum uh, for the program, the course map, the course uh, numbers that students will be taking, um, the current pedagogy that is guiding uh, the program, um, any uh, existing literature on your approach to the program. Um, and this is worth 15 points overall of the total program evaluation. Okay. Next is the partnership with the um, LEA. And like I said, we do encourage um, a MOU, if possible, to be submitted uh, with your final proposal by April 9th. Okay. This is worth 20 points of your overall score. And we're looking for thoughtfulness and connectivity um, between the institution and the LEA. Okay. Um, we're looking for opportunities uh, for professional development. We're looking for placement opportunities for students. Um, just a, a nice back and forth um, between uh, the institution um, and the K-12 partner. Okay. Next is the recruitment plan. Um, how you um, foresee or how you plan to um, get students into the program. This is worth um, 20 points as well of your overall score. Um, for the um, exam preparation and retention piece, okay, um, we're looking to see what your uh, student support plan is. So how do you um, propose to support students who may be at risk? And um, what is your plan to prepare them, either through tutoring, mentoring, or what have you, um, for all of the exams and licensures? Okay. And this is worth um, 20, 20 points. And then finally, uh, the internal evaluation. Okay, um, so here we're looking for a detailed um, evaluation plan, um, how you will monitor your progress and how you will engage in continuous improvement throughout the grant cycle. Uh, when the grant cycle begins, you will be required to submit um, regularly scheduled reports, interim reports, and in those reports we'll be um, looking for uh, those progress uh, and improvement uh, metrics. And so your internal evaluation plan should outline um, your goals for those metrics and what you'll use to determine your success. Okay. And the internal evaluation plan is 15 points um, of the overall grant score. Um, so we'll move on to commonly asked questions. And then after we go through these, we'll open up um, the floor for any uh, remaining questions that you may have um, about the proposal process. Um, so these are questions that we've seen before um, and in the past. Uh, so one question, what details should be included in that curriculum for the program design component? Um, so, like I mentioned here, we're looking for the core academic components of the program, um, the courses, any curricular and co curricular learning objectives, the degree pathway or the degree map um, that students will receive um, charting out their progress through the program. Um, the review committee will prioritize um, programs that emphasize completion within the two year grant cycle. Um, however, that's not necessarily required, but we do want to see um, efficiency of progression through the program. 
Another common question, are indirect costs allowable on this grant? Okay. Um, unfortunately, not all grant funds should be directed towards um, student assistance through tuition, um, instructional materials, exam preparation, and the like. With your one-to-one -one grant match, you can cover um, other uh, fees, such as the cost of grant preparation and so on, but the grant funds themselves uh, should go directly towards um, student assistance as much as possible. Uh, in that same vein, the grants will not be uh, able to cover any travel, and that includes um, student travel. Um, but again, uh, matching funds are um, allowable for that purpose. And so if you do have travel costs, make sure to detail those as um, grantee participation on the budget narrative. Um, we've had a question about pre-registering for courses. So um, because the grant period does not begin to July until July 1, um, that does mean that you cannot uh, make any purchases or um, any expenses before the July 1 start date. However, um, students are allowed to pre-register for courses uh, if that is something that is allowed at your institution. Um, so it is fine to have students sign up for the program um, or pre-register for specific courses in the program before that July 1 start date. Um, another funding question, uh, we will not be able to extend no cost extensions uh, for this grant. Um, due to the nature of the state budget cycles and the fiscal year ending in June, uh, we won't be able to carry forward and any funds not used at the end of the year get reverted back um, uh, to the state coffers. So um, as much as possible, we strongly encourage you to plan to finish up all grant activities by that June 30th and even before uh, deadline. Um, a question about the target population. So uh, in your proposal, you'll be asked to identify your target population of students um, and uh, how you aim to uh, recruit those students. Uh, it is your institutional choice to determine what your po target population will be, but we do strongly recommend that you include any institutional data, local county data to justify those high need areas in the target population. And where you are in the state may inform that and there may be differences in what your uh, target population is or what your high uh, need areas are. Um, so uh, we do recommend that you provide um, some data um, to justify those need, those areas and those needs. A uh, question about the makeup of the reviewing committee. So once your proposals are submitted, it will be reviewed by a committee of four members. Two of the members will be THEC staff. Uh, one member will come from the Department of Education. And then there will be one representative from TACUA, the um, Independent Colleges and Universities Association. Um, regarding the submission of the proposal, um, the proposal itself is limited to 10 pages, not including that title page in any um, appendices and bibliographies. Um, and so as to what can be included in the, in the appendices for your submission, um, you're welcome to put any project timelines, uh, the the CVs for the key faculty and staff, your bibliography, the budget form and narrative, any documents that you'll be using for recruitment purposes, the um, memorandum of understanding with the LEA, and um, those types of things can go in the appendices. Essentially, anything that is not specifically related to one of the five um, program proposal areas can be included in your appendices, but do make sure that your uh, program proposal itself is limited to 10 pages, no more than 10. Um, and then, as we've mentioned, additional information can be found on the THEC website. Like I said, at the conclusion of this meeting, if you have this open in a browser, you will be directed to the um, Academic Affairs website with the Diversity in Teaching RFP and additional information. Okay. 
Um, so those are the high level common questions, frequently asked questions that we've seen. Um, but for now, we'll turn it over and open it up to the Q and A um, for any questions um, that you may have uh, prior to submitting your proposal. Okay, so um, we have a question. Are the two years of the grant discrete allocations or can unused funds from year one be carried forward? Um, the answer is yes, they are two discrete allocations and no unused funds from year one cannot be carried forward to year two. Okay. Um, so in your budget narratives, you want to take into account um, that these will be um, separate um, equivalent distributions um, on July 1st for each year. Um, there's not a limit on the, um, not a page limit on the appendices. Okay, thanks, Corey. <laughs> um, we have had about 18 notices of interest submitted this year. So um, we are very excited and looking forward to um, some great proposals. Um, and we have a mix of new programs and also continuation programs. And so we'll consider all equally and um, uh, uh, we are extremely excited to see the great turnout this year. Um, we will allow for budget revisions. Um, there will be um, a line in the contract. I believe we can allow for revisions up to 20% of the grant award amount, and we can allow for revisions within allocated categories. So we will not be able to allow for um, an, a reallocation to a category not previously funded by the grant, and we will not be able to move around more than 20% of the overall grant total. But within those parameters, budget revisions will be allowed. Okay. Um, does the grant require that the students complete the program in two years of the program, or is it built to license students within two years? There is some flexibility on that. Um, in the proposal, it's stated that um, preference will be given to programs that have students complete within the two years of the grant period. Um, however, that's not required and there is some flexibility. Having students set up to be licensed within that period um, is also acceptable or if there is a plan immediately following the two year period where they will be able to complete an additional semester or so, um, we encourage you to outline all of that in the program design. Um, uh, can we apply for a teaching grant and a leadership development grant at the same time? Um, I believe so. So these are separate grants and I don't think there is a limit on how many you can apply for. Um, proposals will be submitted um, via, um, I think we'll have a portal on the THEC website. I'll double check that for sure. Um, but it'll be, if, if we do submit via a portal, it'll be similar to the portal used for the um, notice of interest um, that you filled out. You will be able to upload PDF pages. So whether it is via email or via a portal on the website, do make sure that your final proposal is combined into a single PDF document. Okay. Let's see, other questions. If diversity is part of the collaborative partnership and MOU with LEA, will that suffice as MOU? I'm not sure I understand the question there, um, but uh, diversity um, is absolutely encouraged to be a part of that collaborative partnership. Um, and if you're asking about if there is an existing partnership, um, with the LEA, um, uh, you can certainly provide that MOU as evidence of partnership. Um, our proposal will include licensing teachers in pre-K and kindergarten. The proposals um, list grades K through 12, but can pre-K be included? Um, 
I'm going to defer to my colleague, Corey. Um, as the current administrator, do you have an answer for pre-K um, licensure? I, I would, I would probably say that. Let us check on that, but I would presume that it would be allowable. Um, and I'm also going to go ahead and respond to um, Lydia Spencer's um, question as well about what is meant by diversity. The purpose of this grant, um, it's diversity is really broadly defined. It can mean both the student applicant pool that your programs will be serving or the um, communities in which they are serving or even the disciplines and subject areas where the students will be going into. Again, just um, be sure to use data to support those. Thanks for your proposal. Okay, um, a question. Um, okay, um, as long as the grant focuses on diverse students, can they be admitted into any licensure program? Um, any a little bit more clarification? You mean at your institution or? And I see, I think Corey has answered. There we go. So, yes, please be sure to explain that information in your proposal if that's the case. Thanks, Corey. All right, any other questions about the process or what you can expect? Oh, okay, so our current PPA does reflect diversity, um, but we were going to additionally have the LEA write a letter for the specific project. Yes, that is acceptable for the MOU requirement. Yes. Yeah, and, and I'll add that in, in our experience um, with these grants, you cannot go overboard with the strength of your. Um, Decision with your LEA partners. Um, the success of this grant is largely dependent on having LEAs who are um, active participants in the recruitment of students, um, who who transmit information about your programs, who give you access to potential students. Um, where we have seen these programs have difficulty is where there have been assumptions of a strong partnership. But in practice, it was not as strong as previously thought. Um, so the more um, the more communication, the more support you can have with your LEAs, the better your proposal will be. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other questions about the process? or about anything that's allowable in your proposals overall. Okay, um, seeing none popping up in the q and I'll go ahead and provide my contact information um, one more time. Um, so if any questions arise during um, your proposal writing process, please feel free to reach out. Um, via email or um, give me a call. Okay. Um, again, the proposals will be due by close of business on April 9th. Okay. And you can find uh, additional information about uh, the submission guidelines, the evaluation rubric, um, and the program components in the um, RFP, which you'll be directed to um, at the uh, conclusion of this call. Um, I will plan to stay on for a few extra minutes if anyone has any one on one questions that they may have. But thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and we look forward to hearing from you um, with your proposal.